You all said? Yep. When we have our You're okay to go. Okay. Welcome to the Monday, March the 6th, 2023, meaning of the Design Review Committee. I'm Mike Pelier. I will let the committee members and staff introduce themselves. Eric Overton, member. Benjamin Cheney, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett, member. Martha Smirsky, member. Liz and, is absent. Oh, okay. At this point, we will let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures. We have two applicants on remotely, and I'm not quite sure. I don't have anybody for the third application yet, but I know that they know that the meeting is going on, so we'll see what happens. Um, okay, so, oops, I'm a little slow today. I'm out of whack, so hold on one second. Got to bring up a presentation for anybody watching via Orca Media. I knew there was something I forgot. Okay. So I'm going to be sharing my screen. Um, what's on the screen is mostly for anybody watching via Orca Media, but the um, information that I'm going to be sharing um, is for everybody who's on remotely. All right, um, so for anyone watching tonight's design review committee meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's meeting via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. Um, so you can either type this um, link into your web browser, um, or you can call in using this phone number and this meeting ID when prompted, and you will be able to both hear the meeting and participate. Um, if anyone is having problems accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. For those attending via Zoom, turning on your video is optional. Um, for everyone attending, please keep your microphone on mute. When you're not speaking, this will reduce background noise. And the Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, right now, all we have on remotely is applicants. Um, but if a member of the public does sign on, please um, make sure to raise your hand, um, either physically or using the raise hand button on your toolbar, um, and wait till someone has, um, till the, the chair has called on you to speak. Um, if the uh, public is unable to access this meeting, then I would get notice of that via email. The meeting would need to be continued to a time, place, and certain. A time and place certain. All right, thank you very much. I'm gonna hand this back over to the chair. At this point, unless anybody has anything to add, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? And I'll second it. All in favor of the, the agenda, speak your names. Martha. Ben. And Steve. Agenda is approved. We can go forward to the first application for 8 Putnam Street. Steve Ribellini, applicant Joe Bully for new signs. Joe's looking to unmute himself. It looks like there. there. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Joe. How's it going? Good. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Go ahead and describe your sign for us. Um, we are looking to do something pretty simple. Um, and it's basically our logo for the cafe. It's going to be painted in white directly onto the building. So we're not going to be having to attach anything. And currently, um, we are not looking at lighting. That is something I've got to discuss with Steve at a later point, but we're just looking to let know, let people know where we are. And Joe, again, what does NOA stand for? They're the initials of my three daughters, Nikita, Olivia, and Anique. And Hi. The three of them have all worked in the business over the years. And so for lack of coming up with something super catchy and 
snappy, I took the easy way out with the name. <laughs> <laughs> when do you hope to start, start this, Joe? The sign or the business? The sign. Um, well, as soon as we can, probably when the weather is a little bit warmer, because we're, it's going to require us to put up some, uh, on the front of the building, we're going to have to put up a little bit of scaffolding, nothing permanent or ridiculous, but um, it's going to be easier than trying to work off of a couple of ladders. Mm -hmm. So preferably nicer weather and hopefully with a little bit of sunshine. So. Okay. When you're thinking of the lighting, depending on how easy or difficult it is to run wiring for either a canopy or a gooseneck light, uh, yep. you have a decent exposure to do a solar light. Yes, exactly. Yep. Yep. And, and uh, the, the nice part of that building, as old as it is, the second floor, boy, you know, it's an old granite shed. So it's all exposed beams and it's open all the way to the peak. So we do, the wiring is going to be relatively uncomplicated, but I've said that before to my chagrin as well. So. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> exactly. I, I'm learning to get a little bit more cautious with what I say, so. <laughs> Does anybody on the committee have any suggestion regarding lighting? Rather than have to come back, we could give him the option of putting either a hardware gooseneck or canopy fixture or a solar fixture. Maybe a black color that sort of blends in with the the rest of the facade of the building at the locations of the science. I would be fine with any of those. Okay. I I have been looking at um, a black gooseneck. So we're we're on the same page with that. Nothing crazy. Okay. Um, and the exterior, uh, what do you, I guess you call it the black, I, you know, I'm not a pro at this. I'll call it the lampshade. It measures about 18 inches, but it's just a, you know, a classic gooseneck, nothing crazy. Yes. With a, with a flood bulb in it, that would give you a good spread that would light your sign up pretty nicely. Yes. Yep. Were you thinking just one, Joe? Um, one on each sign, one on each sign. Yes. Yep. Okay. We can, again, we can add that in as an option for you. Oh, okay. That would be great. If... The light ought to come out fairly far from the building just to be able to cover the signs. Yeah. And to be like, able if to, it's too, back. too tight to the building, it's going to, it'll wash straight it, down. It, yeah, and it's going to, the clapboards are going to create shadows. Okay. So I would do a long goose neck, a swan neck, maybe. Okay. <laughs> um, I think what I'm looking at would come out, eh, I'm going to 18 to 24 inches, probably closer to 24. But I would go with the 24 to prevent those shadows. Okay. All right, now you're teaching me something. So I'm, um, I'm taking so, notes. So Joe, what yes. what this having that recommendation in will do is mean that you don't have to come back to the design review committee to get oh. the link installed, but you would still need to get a uh, um, separate administrative site plan amendment permit for the light because we have to evaluate. Um, the lumens that are being emitted oh. on the parcel. So just so you know, okay. you still need to come back to, to Audra and me when you figure out the exact light fi fixture you want. Um, yep. But but you wouldn't have to come back to the design review committee. Okay. Oh, perfect. That works. 
Okay. I'm as, not... long as, as long as whatever you propose fits in with what they're recommend, you know, giving you as an option, then that'll yeah. all work out. Yeah, we're we're keeping things pretty simple. I'm not trying to do anything too ostentatious. So any other comments, questions, or suggestions? For another project, we got uh specifications yep. for shades yep that's for yep that's for the yep. third application but I'm, I'm looking here and they have ones that go out 27 inches and as much as 48 inches oh for the gooseneck yeah oh mm. okay i'm not looking at 48 i, <laughs> <No. wanna. laughs> I just um, we just said a 24 to 36 inch gooseneck yeah i you know we want to keep the the building we've gotten siding up and, you know, we've cleaned it up pretty nice. And so I'm just looking to keep it pretty clean and simple. We even kind of kept the original color on it when we did redo the siding. So it's kind of a landmark. People don't realize what you're talking about until you, oh yeah, that, okay. I walk by it every day. So I want to, you know, hopefully get that keep that working to my advantage. Okay, good. I can go through the criteria for signs in the con design control overlay district. Number one, the size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review district shall be compatible with the building and structures of the site and surrounding properties. This one's acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures on the side of this building where it's located is acceptable. If a building has multiple tenants, there's this one would not be applicable. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries. These locations are acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to the character defining materials of the building acceptable. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings acceptable. All in favor of the application with the option for the gooseneck light fixture, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Martha. And Steve. Great. It is approved four to nothing in favor. Um, are you Joe's wife? Um, any chance I can get you to sign this recommendation for him since we got the option <laughs> for the light? And then and then we should be able to issue the sign permit tomorrow, as long as oh. Audrey's in the office. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. And did you sign the sign in sheet when you came in? If you can just before you leave, if you do that, it'd be great. Same for you too as well, if you didn't sign in. Awesome, thank you. Fabulous. Oh, I signed in the wrong place myself. <laughs> I, uh, okay. Trying to think too far ahead, not paying attention to what I'm doing at the present. Thank you. All set. Thanks, Joe. All right. Thank you. Hey, thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. Have a good night. The next application is for 8 State Street. Owner of Vermont Rental Solutions, applicant DJ Barry. DJ's on remote. There Hello he goes. Again. Hello. Hello. Go ahead and describe your sign for us. Hi. Um, my sign is just the uh, lettering. Um, I had previously uh, met with you guys uh, towards the end of last year, and the the recommendation from the design review committee was that the words were too thick and hard to read. Um, so I've changed the font to a just a standard sans 
and made them much skinnier. Um, it's just uh, the letters or world cow and um, <clears throat> they're 15 inches tall um, and it, it occupies the same space as proposed uh, before where the first letter of world W and the last letter of cow W um, kind of land sort of middle of the windows and they're just white lettering. Um, they're either gonna be wood or kind of like the outdoor vinyl plastic. Um, and yeah, that's, it's just the name of the business um, that I'm doing business as. Seems as though you're showing us three options. Is there one that you prefer? Oh, there's, no, there's two. One, okay. that um, there, there was, there was a sans and then a sans bold. I kind of like the skinniest one. Yep. J just the sans. Yep. I think it looks clean. Um, okay. And I agree, you know, with the uh, the DRC's decision earlier, I think it was a, a good call to make them thinner. I certainly think I prefer the thinner and I think I'm happy to hear that's your first choice also. I think it looks really nice. I agree with you too, DJ. I like it too. I I can't. I don't know if you guys can see the uh, decals in the window, but those are not going to be like that. Um, the the circle logos um, they uh, will be on the inside of the window, and they might, might not even be black and white. But I just wanted to point that out because it looks like in the image I sent, I resubmitted that they're on top of the window. DJ, so on the copy that got scanned for them, I put a little note that the decals would go inside the window glass, um, just okay. so that, you know, that it's not actually subject to zoning, but I kept it in the application package because you'd submitted it. Okay. Okay. But, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And thank you for, for confirming that I caught that for them. I did have a question about the lettering um, and the installation. And it was kind of last minute inspired by the previous gentleman that you guys were talking with. Um, if I were to paint those exactly how you see it white uh, directly on the wood, um, could that be like an alternative that we talk that we uh, maybe that I know it's too cold now, but um, and I am going to find somebody to make the letters, but I was just wondering if that could be an alternative option. Fine with me. I think it creates somewhat of a maintenance headache in the future, but that's up to you. For painting? Yeah, <laughs> painting directly on the sign ban. Do we have um, painted directly on the sign ban in that area? I'm not sure. I think it's. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was going to ask, is the sign band solid or is it several it's, boards boards together? It's several boards, but it's got a pretty heavy coat of paint on it. Um, so it's pretty smooth when you get up there. I would stencil it. If I were to paint it, um, I would stencil it and then I would hand paint it um, with a really high quality exterior white that I use on my murals that for seven years now look like I painted them yesterday. Um, I, it's just a thought. I mean, it's way too cold to be doing that and I'd rather just get them made and hung up and installed. But I didn't even really consider that until that gentleman said that, that he was planning on painting directly. So if that was an option, um, you know, I just, it'd be nice to know if that was an option. For what it's worth, I think it would be very nice to have it painted directly on there. I think it would actually stand out as a unique way of of having your sign. And I think it would be um, very clean and very sophisticated to have it just be nice and flat like that myself. We we could actually give you the option to either paint it on directly or to do separate letters applied to the to the sign band. So if you if you start to paint it and it doesn't come out like you hope for, you have also the option of putting individual letters on. That would be great if I had both because I do like the idea of 
hand painting it. It's kind of what I do. Um, you know, it's just a matter of timing. I, I know in April we can get some pretty warm weather and I could do it in a day. Um, and then to have that option to just paint over it with the same black and then do the actual letters out of wood or plastic if it didn't work out, um, that might be the approach that I would take. Okay. Um, Th that way, if we get lousy weather continuing, you have the option of painting the letters inside and then applying them. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I think that um, I could even have Bevins make a vinyl um, uh, stencil with that exact lettering and size for me to use and paint. Um, so there's a little different ways to do it, but I do think that painting it right on um, would look really nice. The, the old sign uh, ripped up a little bit of the old paint. Um, and so I did find some of that in the store to kind of uh, fill in that black. Awesome. My preference is to have letters attached, but I would not fight your option of painting directly on the board. But I just want to state my preference. Thank you. And just as um, zoning administrator, I think, you know, if, if you did end up painting it on and then you ended up finding that there were issues maintenance wise with it, because the permit, the design review committee gave you the option either way. Um, I think if you just came in and let us know ahead of time that you were going, going instead after a couple of years with replacing the painted on directly painted on letters with individual letters I, I don't think we'd make you go back to design review if it was still going to look the same because you okay haven't... yeah that i would make them so that they're identical and it would just cover yeah so you know just letting you know and giving that heads up because you you're you would basically be even recreating the exact same thing just with the, the other option that the design review committee gave you yes thank you so much yes i, I like both you're of welcome. those and the the lighting is currently there is that correct um it is i honestly there's a there is one light switch inside the store that i don't know where it goes to and i just haven't been down there at night so maybe it's for those lights um i'm not sure if yeah if they're working or not um those two gooseneck lights but i'll uh I got to, I got to look at that. Well, the, the fact that the fixtures are already there, it's up to you whether you choose to, you know, put bulbs in them and get at them working again, but you don't <clears throat> have to apply yeah. for something that's already in existence. Yeah, no, I'd like them. I think, I mean, I haven't taken a, it's been a while since I've been there at night, but I think it looks nice to have the lights on there. Well, it's a nice option for you in the in middle of winter when it's dark at four o'clock. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised I haven't noticed yet. Um, but I'll tomorrow I should be able to stick around late enough to see. Does anyone have any other on the committee have any other questions or comments? I can go ahead and read down through the criteria for signs in the district. The size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the district shall be compatible with the buildings and structures of the site and surrounding properties. That's acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures. Acceptable. If a building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency in placement and size among all signs. Acceptable. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries. Acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to the character defining materials on the building. Acceptable. Sign design color and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings. Acceptable. 
Science support structures shall be compatible with the building characteristics and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves, acceptable. And again, the option was that you have the option to for applying individual painted letters to the sign ban or painting lettering directly on the sign ban. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Martha, I'm a yes. And Steve, all in favor. So, DJ, I will be emailing you a copy of the recommendation form that Steve just went through. Um, and you can, um, we're going to need your signature on the last page and an applicant block, just because they did add the option in. We want to make sure that we've got confirmation that you agree with that option. Um, and then once we get that back from you and you can either, you can bring it into the office or you can just scan that signed page and email it back. Um, then we'll be able to go forward with processing the permit and getting that issued. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody, so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming back, and good luck with your project and your opening. <clears throat> Thank you. We can go forward with the next applicant for 707 Stonecutters Way. Owner, FHS Holdings, applicant, R.K. Miles. Um, so if one or both of you want to come up to the microphone so that uh, at this point it's Orca Media can hear who's ever talking um, and feel free to adjust the microphone so it's as close to you as possible. Um, it also means that our recording secretary can hear you on the recording afterwards. Go ahead and describe your application for us. Good evening. Um, I'm Steve Connor and with Connor Contracting and RK Miles has hired us to do the work associated with the new entry element that you see on the drawings, as well as some much needed facade improvements. I'm joined by Jeff Notek, who's the manager in Montpelier, and just wanted to uh, talk briefly about um, the fact that they want to do these improvements to the store. Um, and they're using it as a way to showcase some of the products that they sell, um, whether it's uh, Marvin gliding windows or a whole bunch of different siding elements. Also looking to improve handicapped accessibility into the store uh, through the covered entry that you see. Um, and also trying to take some of the rainwater from the upper roof and have that fall in behind uh, the parapet and to travel along the dotted line that you see on the drawing. Uh, that will then eventually make its way to the river end of the building. Um, I think Dan has worked with Kyle and Jeff to send over a number of different products, which uh, they identified for use and uh, happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. And I can also pull things up on the screen if anybody needs that. But they have printouts of everything and I printed out the new stuff I got today so they have copies of that too. Appreciate that. And I just wanted to make sure there was one other thing that Dan had submitted late to you, which was the use of natural cedar clapboards uh, in behind the railing that you see in the picture, just again, to try and have some wood elements um, to show customers. Yeah, so that I've got, I can put that up on the screen. That was one of the things I, gave you guys today in those two new ones, but I can also, there we go. So instead of, cause I think in the plans, it was I'm trying to remember if it was, if there was something else in the plans for that was area. New siding to be identified or to be determined. Yep. yep. That was the one that was not identified when we threw it in. And regarding the railing that you enter, I feel like you're telling us you're proposing this uh, aluminum cable rail infill panel and the drawing shows a, a vertical baluster style something. And I'm just checking in to make sure. So that's a great question. Um, I think the, um, the railing that was submitted, the aluminum rail with cable infill along that uh, long side underneath the porch is, is one element. And I don't think we've probably identified the handrail itself, which will come up the ramp. 
um, which is intended to be a galvanized handrail, which shows on the, the overhead plan, the, the partial floor plan, as it's called yeah. out. Yeah. So that's something that Department yeah. of Public Safety will want. Um, so that's outboard of all that. It's yes. A simple double rail. So thanks for that question. So Borden Batten, Joe Borden Batten, or is it P one eleven? Jeff, can you speak to that? Yes, we are looking at the Hardy Borden Batten site. It's an actual Borden Batten. Okay. Yes. At wait, Hardy, I think of as a concrete product, but it's uh, that is we're, we were looking at Hardy or the LP, the smart site. Yep. Uh, they both offer the same things, a similar product, or same design, different products, and that's the one. Both in a slate blue? Both in a slate blue for a bumping. Yes. Or for the band. Yeah. This is going under the canopy. No, it's going around the canopy, actually, correct? Yes. So it's above the above the doorway element? Uh, behind the RK Miles sign that's shown with lighting and around the left and right sides. You're not, you're not uh, staying with a wood product. Do you want to use the party board? Uh, the LP is what we we're looking for. I'm sorry. Same thing as meant for? Uh, no, LP is a wood product. Oh, okay. Yep. yep. I'm not familiar with the names. So. Yep, the LP smart side is a uh, it's a wood product. And they yeah. have all sorts of siding, but they do the uh, board bat is a board. If I'm understanding you correctly, this is just for the area underneath these overheads. It's not for the entire building. Is that correct? Correct. That is the board and bat would be the, the strip of roof mm -hmm. under the windows. Yep. We're proposing a major siding change. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's what, yeah. Yes, that's, it's the, what's up there is very tired, very bad. It's mm -hmm. cracked. It has uh, actually, it's it's still sun faded, so you can see how the lumber company. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, it hasn't been touched in a long, long time. And so all of this is switching to vertical board and batten. You're going to keep this side horizontal, but new. The board and batten is. The two of the sign RK miles. Mm -hmm. So that portion projects out. That's the only portion that would be um, the board and back, okay. right where the hand do now. Okay. okay. So the, the lines don't seem to quite match up. I think this is vertical metal siding that has a little line that goes and goes to point here. And this says so new LP smart side siding here. Stuff like Maybe I've got, maybe you sent an updated one with Dan and I just didn't realize that that one was updated. Vertical metal. Yeah. So hold on, let me go back to my email. I didn't realize it was correct. <laughs> okay. Okay, so hold on. Let me go back to Dan. Um, I didn't realize it was a new plan with That's new codes. All right. So if you guys look up on the screen, that's the existing. Hold on. Are you going to keep DJ Barry's cow on the outside of? That's on. Yep, that's actually on the back of our yeah. one of our sheds. Yeah, yeah just that just still says because we just had that past week. Still says critical metal siding for this bit. Hmm. So I don't think I got the corrected one. Uh, is that cow going to stay? <laughs> the cow's going to stay. <laughs> okay, I'm about to sign off, but I did want to okay. say hello to Steve Connor because he's a good family friend of mine. Okay. DJ, we're not going to touch the cow. Okay. 
Thank you. But, you know, let's talk. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> All right. Hello to the family. So, yeah, I don't have an updated one. So the vertical is going to be board and batting, bat, board and batten, not, That's correct. Yep. not vertical metal. That's okay. Correct. And where the metal is going, what's there now? Uh, vinyl, very old vinyl siding. I think you can see it. Um, I don't know, Meredith, if you could uh, pull up the photos that we included. Yeah, and another one around the corner too, which is which one's equally tired. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that just gets stripped off and you replace it. Yeah. And as part of the construction, which will give our application to the DRB, we all, in order to do this project, we'll have to put in a temporary entrance to the store to the left, just on a temporary basis to get customers safely in and out. So it's be a bit of work on that also. But deciding on this end, that will be horizontal. Is that correct? Jeff, is that the intent to put this siding? Is that going to turn the corner? Um, everything visible from the road from stone cutters will be the metal uh, vertical siding okay. coming all the way around. On the main building facing the parking lot, the main building is clapboard mm -hmm. facing into the parking lot, as well as under the roof is also clapboard. That one will just be, uh, the color will match the metal on the front of the building. So if we're looking at that elevation, what Jeff is saying, we're looking at that elevation, there's a four wide window there on the bottom left. Yep. Yes. Everything to the left of that vertical corner board going out to the road is gonna be the vertical metal siding. So, yes. and turning the corner, okay, facing so, stone cutters. So both, both sections of the north elevation, it's all yes. vertical. Yes. Correct. And around the corner, everything becomes horizontal flatbreds. Once it gets to the past the offices and to the main building. Okay. But you'll see this little bit of horizontal here that's in the lower part, sort of Correct. peeking around. Yes. Yep. 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 These are vertical. And then, yep. And this little strip of the roof will be over, will be vertical, right? Board and mat. Yep. yep. And there's no elevations of the riverside. Is there anything changing on that side? No, that there really isn't. case is going to be there. And there really isn't. We did a couple of uh, stairway uh, exit stair improvements on that old stairway that's there, but mostly just some code improvements to uh, be able to get people safely off the second floor, working with Meredith and with um, Michelle. Yep. So. Again, what color do you expect the exterior to be inside? It's going to be uh, charcoal gray, uh, a darker gray than what it currently is, mm -hmm. uh, more along the lines of uh, like the uh, National Clothes Bender or where, okay. where about that same, similar yep. to that color yep. there. And then the, again, the proposed color for the vertical board and batten above the vestibule goes to a slate, slate blue. blue. Yep. And like then the, uh, again, the Allen one for the uh, arcade mile <laughs> that wraps around. Okay. And then it would have signage, of course, facing the parking lot inside, which would also be the RK miles blue. to match the size currently on the building.
any committee members have any other comments, questions, or suggestions? Nope. I don't. Okay, then I can go. Was, were there any changes that you noted that from the original application or everything is? Um, yeah, it's, it's there's that one really note, one note about the board and baton being on the front being there instead of vertical metal. That was one that was really okay. different. Um, and I have these other items in the file. I don't know what this. No. Okay. I just wanted to add one other thing, which is <clears throat> I think the materials that Dan sent over might have shown a dark bronze front door entry element. Um, and I'm just wanted to point out that since RK Miles has talked about ebony window frames, we're probably going to go with a black door frame as well. So, okay. Yep. That would okay. match. Yeah. That would just so it matches. I just wanted to point that, that out. Probably goes better with the gray and blue. Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Just to change. Don't need to fill it in. Monday. No, it'll be yeah. it'll be done. Just go. No, we have to change it there. It'll no. be in the minutes. Okay. And regarding the cow, I can't speak for Mr. Miles on the cow, but I'll, <laughs> I'll leave that for a later date. So. Yeah. Cow's going to stay to the best of my knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's not a sign. It's public art. That's what you you guys in DJ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can read down through the criteria for this project. Exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Additions and alterations to non-historic and non-contributing structures shall respect and be compatible with the existing patterns and setbacks found in adjacent buildings. New additions on non-historic and non-contributing structures that overshadow or diminish the historic character of adjacent contributing structures are prohibited. This application is acceptable. And my pen just ran out of ink. Thank you. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from public view. It's acceptable here. Additions to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire code shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable. On there that it didn't have lighting, they did add in the light fixture and the stuff that I added into your packets today. So just to keep an eye out for that, not applicable. Okay, there was a like that's usually in the sign, but just keep your eyes okay. open. Just double check. Yep. Don't don't just trust my not applicable. <laughs> the, the height of building additions shall not overwhelm the primary facade and must consider varied heights of existing buildings and adjacent buildings. And it's not a new building, but the existing building is acceptable. Proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors, and the facade of a building shall create a rhythm, acceptable. Roof shape and equipment. Consider similarity or compatibility with roof shapes in intermediate area, conceal rooftop equipment and features on flat roofs from eye level, from adjacent public rights of way and from the ground level of any adjacent properties. Acceptable architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tabulature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration acceptable. Roof drainage systems shall not hide or obscure architectural character defining features and shall run adjacent to building corners when possible acceptable. Outdoor lighting, structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and compatible with the neighborhood acceptable. 
And actually, that was all. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Sure. Ben. Martha, I mean, yes. And Steve says yes. So vote is four to nothing in favor. Signed in the right place. <laughs> Did you hear? When do you sign that? Down at the bottom. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for coming. Have a good night. Good luck with your project. Thank you. I hope the weather's kind to you during your construction. Thanks for that wish. <laughs> <laughs> we share the same wish. So we'll try and get this permit out in the mail tomorrow or the next day at Great. the latest. Fantastic. Right. What's the next DRB date, Meredith? Do you know that off the top? So, uh, Oh goodness, I don't know off the top of my head what the next deadline is. Can you email me? Sure. Um because yep. we'll do so you're tweaking, you think you might actually have to go to the DRB for the we? space. Well, I didn't if you only stick with the one additional parking space, that was administrative. That's that okay. Didn't, yeah, so, that so we're good to, to go to DRB, that's through me. Okay. We'll come see you then. We'll okay. talk. Okay. Excellent. Awesome. Okay. Thank you again. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Good. You too. Bye. Oh, that pen is still dead, right? You can yes. my pen. <laughs> Don't give me back my pen. <laughs> Ooh, we can approve these minutes for December 5th. Has so everybody had a chance to look at the December 5th minutes? Yeah, <laughs> Eric just moved. I'll second. And speak your names for Eric. final approval. Ben. Martha. Yay. Good. We did it. And then Thanks. it says 12 to 21. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, we didn't. I'm sorry. Two, yeah, 221. We didn't get those until uh, yesterday. So I haven't even had a chance to scan through them. That wasn't in the office till like 2 30. So I just want you guys to know that I lose. I thought we were going to get these done actually in June. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad we were able to get it together. <laughs> We kept going back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> Just kind of any feels like June already. <laughs> Winter and Mother Nature got together and say, "Oh shit, we forgot Vermont." <laughs> awesome. Does anybody have anything else? Otherwise, do you hear a motion to adjourn? I'll second. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Martha. Here. Ben. Steve. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you for coming. Thank you, guys. Thank you.